Good day, my brother and sister. Welcome to the edition. Welcome to the edition. I truly hope and pray that the Lord is keeping you in good health, in good spirits, and that even though there are times when your faith may be wavering, that he somehow manages to nudge you and give you hope to renew your hope and spirit so that you can hold on till the manifestation of whatever it is that the Lord has promised you or whatever it is that you're waiting on the Lord for in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I have such a beautiful dream I want to share with you. Uh, this was the first dream I have had about specifically this house, which is why I'm excited to share it with you. Oh, I woke up from this dream and I was so, like, I was excited. My spirit was overjoyed. And I'm here to share it with you because I think it encompasses so many things. It was almost like the Lord summarizing where I have been and where I am now and where I am going all in one dream and I'm sharing this dream with you because I don't know where you are I don't know if you're on the other side of the promise I don't know if you are living in the promise or you are still waiting for the promise but I can assure you that this dream will be there will be a message here for you and I want you to hold on to that message wherever you are knowing that in every single part of the journey the Lord has a message and the Lord has a word and the Lord has um instructions he can give you to guide you in the mighty name of Jesus. My brother and sister, I want you to keep the scripture at the back of your head. And this is Jeremiah 29 verse 11. The Lord has been putting this dream, uh, this, this scripture, not only in my spirits, and it's been popping up in different places for me. And um, the Holy Spirit helped me to understand what the Lord was saying to me in connection to the dream. So I want you to keep Jeremiah 29 verse 11 in your head as I share this dream with you and remember this verse says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope in the future that's what the Lord says he says that the plans he has for you are to prosper you not to harm you plans to give you hope in the future keep that verse at the back of your head as I shared this dream all right so uh, in this dream, I was in my kitchen, this very kitchen in this house, and I wanted to make my son a hot dog. And I remembered, I think I had opened the fridge and I remembered that I had the previous set thought or realized that I had ran out of uh, hot dog rolls, the bread rolls. So as I opened the fridge, I knew that it was like opening, knowing that there will be no bread there. So I opened the fridge and I, I realized, oh, I forgot to buy the bread rolls because I realized yesterday I had ran out, but I still didn't buy them. I don't know why, but in the dream, I then opened the cabinets and I say it was specifically in this house because the cabinets I opened are the very blue that I have here. I will insert them somewhere here. I opened these cabinets and uh, on, on every single shelf was a, an abundance of bread. There was so much bread. There was bread at the top. There was bread filled to capacity, bread in every shelf. And I then thought in the dream, you know what, I should take this bread and freeze it because this is so much bread, it will lose its freshness. And if I don't do something about it, it's gonna go stale. So just after doing this, I open another cabinet and I see that there's just this abundance and abundance of bread in every other cabinet. So from going to thinking I should freeze the bread, I then realize even if I froze this bread, I will never be able to finish this bread. So the dream ended as I thought, I am gonna take this bread and drive around to my friends around and share this bread with them so that they too can be filled in the mighty name of Jesus. The dream ends as I realize that there is so much bread, not only for us to eat now, but for me to store up. But not only for me to store up, there will still be so much bread and abundance of bread that I need to share it in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, you, must, you can already imagine from hearing me uh, talk about this dream that this was a good dream. And, I, I, you know, uh, before I even go to scripture, uh, remember I said I had not bought the bread, that I had wanted to do something, there was a lack, but 
uh, and I realized that I on my own capacity had not gone to the shops to go and buy the bread but somehow I opened the cabinets and there is an abundance of bread bread that I did not buy bread that I didn't put there by myself but not only was there the bread that I needed but there was an overflow of bread not only for me to eat now but for me to put in my storehouse in the mighty name of Jesus but not only for me to put in my storehouse in the mighty name of Jesus for me to be able to share with my loved ones my friends in the mighty name of Jesus anybody who was in the near vicinity who could who I could drive around to say do you want bread I was able to go and drive and give this bread my brother and sister is not that not a summary of this journey I've been on with the Lord is this not a summary of what Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says when the Lord says for I know the plans I have for you he declares plans to prosper you plans to give you a future plans to give you hope you see when I started this channel I had been living my life um, um, just um, relying on my own capabilities being smart being creative but there was nothing to show for it uh, I was I was failing to, to, to be able to even uh, do the things that other people were doing so effortlessly things seem to be slipping out of my fingers and then when I followed the plan of the Lord over my life things seemed to come effortlessly I opened the cabinets and there was provision not just provision but an overflow of provision the Lord was filling up the cabinets the Lord was given the bread of life my brother and sister I want to um, read uh, Isaiah chapter 30 I'm going to read a few verses because it's pretty it's pretty long that's the verse I'm, uh, I'm going to or the chapter I'm going to read at the end but before I get to that chapter I just want to read the other verses in the Bible to do with the bread to do with the bread if we go to uh, John chapter 6 verse 35 Jesus says to them I am the bread of life he who comes to me will not hunger and he who believes in me will never thirst he says I am the bread of life he who comes to me will never hunger and he who believes in me will never thirst remember uh, uh, the, the Bible also says that Blessed is she who believes in what the Lord uh, said to her uh, uh, because there shall be a fulfillment of the word. So the, he says, come to me. I want to force you onto me. I want to force you to choose me as your savior. Uh, I want to force you to choose me uh, as the person who you will follow as your compass in life. But when you come to me, I can tell you without a shadow of a diet, doubt that you will not hunger. Why? Because I am the bread of life. I will give you sustenance in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus and not only that when you believe in me you will not go thirsty all right let's go to Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 it says but he answered and said it is written men shall not live on bread alone but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God let's go back to uh, Jeremiah um, chapter cha um, chapter 29 verse 11 he says for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord so it's not just the bread that you will be you need to be living according to the word of God over your life you need to be living according to the plans of God over your life why because yes right now in your own capac capacity you might be able to put bread on the table but it will run dry it will it will you will it will run out it will become stale and it, at some point the very same place where you were being blessed starts what to pollute your environment why because God when it's his plan he keeps you moving he keeps you moving so that the plan itself never harms you the plan itself gives you hope the plan itself gives you a future the plan itself prospers you in the mighty name of Jesus that's why I said re remember that that verse remember that verse because it really um, truly uh, summarizes what I have gone through this is me I was lacking I then I, by faith, by faith, 
I went to the Lord and I said, God, here I am. I avail myself. I see you've been trying to get my attention. I avail myself. I never thought this was something I would do. I mean, who does this? I, 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 this was not a thing for me. Um, sharing the, the word of God was not a thing for me. But here he did. He took me on this journey and so much peace I have. And now I'm able to share this bread with you. I'm saying here he is, the bread of life. If you want sustenance, if you never want to go hungry, I am sharing this word with you. That's what that's, that, that dream meant. Not only the abundance of the material things, but that the Holy Spirit, there is an abundance, an overflow, and I am here to share this goodness of God. I'm here to share this goodness of God with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, my brother and sister, uh, I would like to urge you to read Isaiah 30. I'm going to summarize and read here and there. But Isaiah 30 is talking about, it summarizes a few things. Um, these people are going through affliction. They have turned away from what the Lord said about them and, and the plans he has over them. And the Lord has said to them that I will do this. I will, there will be a wrath in the land. But after saying all these things, he then tells them the things that he needs, they need to do in order to gain favor with the Lord. So let me just now go to verse uh, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. It says, I'm going to read verse 1 to 3 for now. It says, Woe to the ob obstinate children, declares the Lord, to those who carry out plans that are not mine, forming an alliance, but not by my spirit. Woe to those people. Woe to the obstinate children, declares the Lord, to those who carry out plans that are not mine, forming an alliance, but not by my spirit, heaping sin upon sin, who go down to Egypt without consulting me, and who look for help to Pharaoh's protection. He is talking about us who try and figure out this world, not following his plan, by our own might, strength. He's saying war to these children. Woe to you, woe to us, those who do it not by his spirit. All right, I'm going to skip and go to 15. He then says, this is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. He says, in repentance and rest, in repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. They, they, these particular people didn't have none of it. He tells you what to do. You have been living life, not according to the plan of God. But now he says, I'm going to tell you how to change the situation. Repent from that old life and rest in me. So I can tell you the plans I have over your life. Rest in me. And in the quietness of your rest, trust in what I tell you. Trust in what I tell you, all right? And then I'm going to skip, and I'm going to go to verse 19. And he says, people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. You see, you were living this life that is not according to the plan of God. And then you get to the point where he tells you what you should do repent and then rest in his plan he will make it when you are quiet and still he will reveal it to you and then he tells you what happens when you do that he says you will weep no more how gracious he will be when you cry for help as soon as he hears he will answer in the mighty name of jesus he will answer you in the mighty name of jesus although the lord was giving you bread of adversity and the water of affliction before when you were doing it according to your own will and not according to his spirit he says he was giving you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction but now you turn and you go to the bread of life that is jesus christ he says then what will happen if we continue in that verse he says once this has happened your teachers will be will not be hidden your teachers will not be hidden no more with your eyes you will see them 
Whether you turn to the left or to the right, your ears will hear the voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. This is the way, walk in it. My brother and sister, do you hear that? He says, when you turn and you come to me and you start not to do things according to your own will, then your teachers will no longer be hidden from you. He will no longer give you the, the bread of affliction. He will give you, you will then have what? The bread of life. You'll have the bread of life. And he says, right here, that whether you turn to the left or to the, to the right, your ears will hear the voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Why? Because the steps of a righteous person are ordered by God. Oh, my brother and sister, I'm getting excited because I know what it means to do it according to your own will, to do it according to your own plans. And I have been blessed to see, to go through the transition of repentance and resting in the Lord and saying, God, I failed according to my own plan. God, I failed when I tried to do it by my own might and my own strength. Here I am, God. I turn to you. I rest at your feet. Tell me the way to go. And he has directed me. The teachers have been everywhere. The messages have been everywhere. Whether I turn left or turn right, I hear them even at the back. I hear them. That is our God. They will say to you, this is the way. This is the way. Keep going in it. Keep pressing in it. Walk in it in the mighty name of Jesus. My brother and sister, it doesn't matter where you are. It does not matter where you are. Go to the feet of the Lord. He says, repent and rest. And in your quietness, right? That's what he says right here. That's what he says in, in, in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. He says, repent and rest in your salvation, in quietness and in trust. There is your strength. Because once you are quiet and you listen to the plans he has for you, and you, after he tells you that plan, even though you don't understand, even though you feel unworthy, even, for, even though you feel unqualified, you need to trust with a conviction, with a... With a you need to trust that that plan is not to harm you. That plan is not to shame you. That plan is to prosper you. That plan is to give you hope. That plan is to give you a future in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, my brother and sister, I pray that this word blesses you. I pray that this is the word that you need to hear today. I pray that this is the word that will stir something in your heart so that you can trust that the plans of God, the plans of God, are there to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope and to give you a future in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I say all these things. Amen.